today we are learning about inverse relations and functions. We just have our sheet of paper. I tried to say this at the beginning, but I'd be forgetting. Um, so that we can talk about inverse relations and functions so you can learn along with me. Don't just stare at my face, even though it's a good face. Anyway. Math with Miss B. Math with Miss B. There's a thousand other places that you'd rather be. But you're watching math with Ms. B. Um, so inverse relationship functions, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk about our prior knowledge. Okay, so <clears throat> when we're talking about inverses, you know what additive inverse is are. You may not know the term, but you know positive 3 plus negative 3 make 0. They cancel out. Um, multiplicative inverse, you know that 5 divided by five or multiplied by one fifth. It's the same thing, hate to break to you. No, you don't like fractions, but you use them all the time. Um, so five times one fifth, that's multiplicative inverse. That's what cancels out of five is a one fifth. Um, you know roots and powers. Um, if you're my students, great. You know roots and powers. Uh, some of you might not know that you know this, but you know this. So to do an x squared, you take the square root. To do an x cubed, undo an x cubed, you take a cube root. Uh, to undo an x to the fourth, you do a fourth root, right? And what we're learning about soon is exponents and logs, right? <clears throat> um, so this is new probably to everybody. Uh, so 2 to the power of x and log base 2x. What is that? Well, just, just wait. Not this lesson. I'm ahead of myself, but just throwing it in there. Okay, so inverse functions are functions that undo each other. So 3 and negative 3 undo each other for, for addition. Multiplication 5 and 1 fifth undo each other, right? A radical undoes a square or, or a square root undoes a square. You get it, okay? You can always find an inverse relation, but you cannot always find an inverse function. More to come on, on that, okay? So let's say they're asking you to graph, to graph inverse relations and functions, okay? What you're gonna do is you're gonna switch x values with y values, and you're gonna reflect points across the line y equals x. <clears throat> What does that mean? Great. So glad you asked because that's what we're going to get into. <laughs> All right. So let's say we graph. They're going to give you a relation. So you're going to graph the relation and connect the points. After you do that, then you will graph the inverse and identify the domain and the range. All right. So let's look at this table. This would be given to you. You're not figuring this out, right? So I have X and Y. So my first point is 0, 2. So I'm going to go ahead plot that on the graph, right? And then I have 1, 5. Go ahead, plot that on the graph. And then 5, 6, plot that, and then 8, 9. Plot that, right? So connecting, I'm going to decide what my domain and my range is. Remember your domain is your leftmost x value and then your rightmost x value. Did I say that right? From left to, to from left to, yeah, yeah, yeah I did. <laughs> um, so from left to right, I have zero, and then my biggest one is eight. And then uh, your range is your lowest to your highest, right? So my lowest is gonna be two, my highest is gonna be nine, so my, that's my domain in my range. You should be pretty much familiar with that, okay? Um, all right, so let's talk about the inverse, right? So the inverse is basically, remember, it just says that we switch our x's and our y's. So instead of 0, 2, now it's 2, 0. Instead of 1, 5, it's 5, 1. 5, 6 turns into 6, 5. And then 8, 9 turns into 9, 8. Right? So I'm just going to go ahead and plot those lovely points on the graph and connect those dots. That's my inverse. Boom. Right? So if I give you a table, just flip the values. If I give you a graph, just reflect them across this beautiful line that we call the line y equals x. So all of that should have came together. Switch your x's and your y's or reflect it across the line y equals x. And your domain and range are also switched. Because remember, domain are your x values and range are your y values. So all you do is change them and change the letters. <laughs> okay, um, so let's do another one, obviously. Okay, same directions. Okay, 
We're gonna start with pink this time. Uh, so I'm gonna plot my points. One comma zero, three comma one, four comma two, five comma three, six comma five. Right, so then I need to figure out what my inverse is. And after I figure out my domain, obviously. So my domain is one to six and my range is zero to five. Um, so I'm gonna do it by reflecting, right? So I just wanna, that, that line y equals x, I'm just gonna evenly space the points across that line y equals x. So diagonally, if it looks like it's one space away, go to one space away, if it's two spaces away, you get it, right? Um, and then I just fill in a table. That table should be the same whether or not I did the table first and then plotted the points, or if I plotted the points, then did the table. It don't matter. It's the same. Okay. Um, so that's graphing. Easy peasy lemon. That's co easy. Find inverse functions algebraically. Okay, what does that mean? Well, you need to know some notation first. So first of all, you need to know that f of x is function notation, is how you denote a function, right? f to the negative one is inverse notate function notation. So to denote, that means to label an inverse, I would say f to the negative one parentheses x. This is just notation, it's just a name, y'all. I know you're looking at it like, oh my goodness, it's just a name, it's just how I refer to it, okay? So just take it at face value. To find an inverse algebraically, switch x with y, or f of x, and then solve for y, okay? Very, very basic, all right? So we're gonna do a few examples. Um, example number one, out of five, I think. I didn't, I didn't number them this time, huh, what am I thinking? Um, so let's say I have f of x equals x, over three. First of all, you wanna switch f of x with y. We all know f of x equals y, f of x equals y. So we're just gonna go ahead and change that, right? Step number two, switch the x with the y, boom. And then we're gonna isolate y. So we're gonna cancel out that three. Um, and when I do that, I'm gonna get three x equals y. Mm. Um, and then I'm gonna switch y with f of negative one, so with the inverse notation. So instead of y, I have my inverse notation, and boom! We found that inverse, baby! It's just that easy. Yes, it is that simple. You're just undoing. Switch the x and the y, undo, okay? Isolate. And use your proper, proper notation. Okay, so f of x equals x plus two thirds. Switch f of x with y. Boom. Switch y with x. Boom. Isolate y. So y plus two thirds. You know, you're looking at, oh my gosh, the fraction. I don't know what to do. If that was y plus two, what would you do? You would subtract two from both sides. So guess what you're gonna do? Subtract two thirds from both sides. It's not that hard. Stop complaining about fractions. Um, so X minus two thirds equals Y. And then I'm just gonna make sure I use my proper notation. And I'm gonna get F negative one of X equals X minus two thirds. And nailed it. See what I did there? Um, anyway, uh, example number three. F of X equals three parentheses X minus seven. Um, switch f of x with y. We keep doing this. this is the same thing. Switch y with x. Um, isolate y. Boop, boop. That's right. Get rid of that three by division. Um, and then you're gonna get rid of that seven plus seven plus seven. Uh, I'm gonna get x over three plus seven equals y. And then what do you gotta do now, guys? Switch f of negative one with y. Oh my gosh, you did it. Okay, try uh, the next one by yourself, please. That means pause 
a full video and do it on your own, okay? Because staring at me do math does not prove that you can do math. It proves that I can do math. <laughs> okay, um, so I'll wait. Hopefully you pause the video. So, switch FFX with I. Um, switch Y with X. Isolate Y. Plus seven. Plus seven. Boop. Divide by five. Divide by five. Boop. Switch Y with F of negative one of X. Because you want your proper inverse notation. Yay! <laughs> So I just remembered that I could put gifts in my presentation and um, yeah, I'm gonna be so annoying now. <laughs> okay, so find the inverse. I believe this is the last, yeah, this is the last, last example. F of X equals negative one half X minus the five. Ladies and gentlemen, switch F of X with Y. Y equals negative one half X minus five. Um, switch the Y with the X and then isolate Y. First you're gonna do plus five plus five. Oh, you should have paused the video. I forgot to say that. It's fine. Um, so X plus five equals negative one half Y. And you're like, that's a fraction. What did I do? Well, we already talked about multiplicative inverses. like. What cancels out a one half? It's a two, a negative two, because negative negative makes a positive. I need it to be positive. Two over one or just two, same thing. Um, if I do it to one thing, obviously you gotta do it to all other things to keep it balanced. Okay, we're all about balance here. Um, so once uh, Y is isolated, I'm gonna go ahead and use my inverse notation, okay? And my inverse notation tells me that it is gonna be f negative one of x equals negative two x minus ten. That's my answer. Do do a little dance, do a little dance. I'm not gonna sing the rest of that. <laughs> uh, I hope you learned something. Okay.